Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Great Day Washington. I'm Kristen Bursett Harris. And I'm Ellen Bryan. A very sad weekend, sad Saturday, a sad morning as the world has lost a superstar on and off the court. Basketball legend Kobe Bryant passed away yesterday at the age of 41 in a helicopter crash in California. And also his 13 year old daughter Gianna was also aboard the flight along with seven others. And while the city of Los Angeles and the world were grieving, they did carry on with music's biggest night, the Grammys and Ellen. We know how sports is can bring us together as mm -hmm. can music. It can help us heal. Yeah, it's music's biggest night and joining us now to share some of the amazing tributes and more at the Grammys. We have the host of ET, Kevin Frazier. Kevin, we know you're also a great friend of Kobe's. How are you doing this morning? It is. It was really surreal being in the Staples Center because having spent so much time as a sports reporter covering him, mm -hmm. uh, just talking to him, uh, it was it was really weird being back in that building. And Krista, didn't you talk to Kobe also? I did. I was here, uh, co you know, covered him in his last game here in D.C. Right. against the Wizards. I posted a photo of it last night because he just had this huge smile. You know how much he loved the game of basketball, and it gave him so much. Yeah. Uh, but 41 years old, Kevin, I mean, it's just right. so young. Well, that's the heartbreaking thing. And I saw him two weeks ago, and uh, he invited me out to Mamba Academy to come see a <laughs> game because we had talked about going out to see Gigi. And um, he loved coaching that team so much. He was so invested in it. He made sure his schedule was always clear so he could get to practice each and every night. Last night at the Grammy, so many stars who loved Kobe or idolized him or at least knew him talked about how tough the news was and the moment. Let's start with DJ Khaled. To be honest with you, it's, it's just real tough. Uh, no disrespect. It's even harder to even do an interview. I understand you know that. Like, it's, a, it's just a real tough day, and um, we want to send our love to the families, of course. Um, the kids, the mothers, and the whole entire family, the wives and everything. It's just it's, it's devastating. And that, ladies, was the general sentiment of the evening. Right. Billy Ray Cyrus was so emotional during the pre-show. And, and then mm -hmm. afterwards, after he performed on stage with Lil Nas X, he still couldn't kind of wrap his head around what had happened. Do you think Kevin Bean Kind of like Alicia said tonight, this is in some ways a, a way to honor him and his house and people coming together in music and song. And uh, I felt like there was a... A very kind and sweet spirit in the house tonight. And um, again, tip of the hat to Mr. Kobe Bryant and what he's meant. I don't know if you noticed, I even put a little special Kobe on my guitar. I thought, you know what, I'm going to put a little Kobe in here. And it's just, it's just a special night. It's interesting because literally from there, Billy Ray is walking right down the hallway to where the Lakers locker room was. Mm -hmm. And so it was another stark reminder of Kobe. Um, Lizzo pulled out of the red carpet. She didn't do any red carpet interviews um, once she had learned the news. Of course, she started the show with a shout out to Kobe. Tonight is for Kobe. Man, everything tonight is for Kobe. For Kobe and his family and his daughter, everything. And uh, that was Lizzo rushing off before she did another performance. Um, boys to Men, you saw that, oh, that emotional opener with, wasn't that something else? Yes, it was. And, it was and a great way It to came it. together. And Go during ahead. that, too, no, I was it talking DJ Khaled, you saw the tears in his eyes amongst mm -hmm. other people in the audience when yeah. he performed mm -hmm. that. And, and that's because there were so many people that were emotion, emotional. John Legend, when he uh, walked by, he said, Kev, I, I can't talk about this. I can't stop. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Common. But um, Boys to Men talked about how they pulled the performance together and what Kobe meant to them. It's, it's an honor as well as a tragedy, you know, um, to know that uh, he used to, you know, come back and forth to the games and, you know, that he won't be here any longer. His spirit is still going to dwell within these oh, without buildings. Doubt. And, without and doubt. Within this building. And it's just going to be one of those things that he, he's going to be remembered as one of the greatest that ever did it. You know, it's interesting they talk about his spirit in that building because yeah. Kobe attended lots of games. And last night during the Grammys, they illuminated his two numbers that were retired, 8 and 24. He spent his entire 20-year career as a Laker. And even when he retired, he was beloved in the city. And Angelinos look at Kobe as one of those people like, you know, in Baltimore, you have a Cal Ripken, you know. Right. In D.C., you have certain players. But in L.A., you have Kobe. And Ava DuVernay, the director, um, is an Angelino, and she remembered Kobe last night.
Rough night. It is a, a lot of people with heavy hearts being in this building tonight to celebrate, but still we remember the greatness of Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm Angelino, born and bred. Um, I'm here to introduce the Nipsey tribute. And to have this happen to Kobe, it's um, still reeling from it. Lots of people reeling. And um, ladies, let's, let's talk about some of the magical moments. Um, mm -hmm. I thought Usher's tribute to Prince was oh, fantastic yes. because it was. Prince was a guy who didn't like a lot of people singing his music no. <laughs> or performing it. And, and Sheila E., I talked to Usher and Sheila E. backstage, and they were like, no. Sheila was like, Prince would have loved this, loved this moment. Now, Billie Eilish was the big winner, and um, yes. she becomes the youngest person, the youngest person ever to win song, record, and album of the year. She also won for Best New Artist. In all, she won five Grammys. And after she won, that final record of the year award, she was just trying to grasp what in the world was going on when I caught up with her. Beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah, dude, this is surreal. This is like a dream. Oh my God. How are you? I am good. I am good, but I can only imagine how this moment must feel and can you digest it? No. <laughs> I'm like... Ellen and Chris, did you guys have a fa favorite moment? But I will say Camila Cabello singing to her dad yeah. took yes. on yes. such yes. an amazing moment with everything that had happened. I mean, incredible to see her and the, the uh, connection there. But I was crying by the end of that Demi one. Lovato also. Yes. I mean, Demi Lovato, her return yeah. and that she started her song over. Had to restart. And, you know, a couple of years ago, in that same building, just, uh, you know, Microsoft Theater is attached to the Staples Center. I, I talked to her after she had come back from a stint in rehab, and she said it's a day-by-day -day process that mm -hmm. she doesn't know if she'll ever win the real battle against addiction. And we saw a couple of years ago that, you know, she, she had those issues. So this right. was her first performance. And I, I just thought about how tough things are and how mm -hmm. addiction right. is something you just can't you can't play with but also you just don't wipe it off it's a disease and it's hard to shake I also thought last night Alicia Keys was the perfect host with everything that had happened right. yes she just had such a heart she, she welcomed everyone like they were her best friend and she just led the night yes. in that somber tone but also brought the energy yeah. and the healing power of music with it and real quick Kevin she was oh go ahead go ahead she was masterful yes she was masterful and beneath the stage I talked to her and she talked about that her husband, Swizz Beats, was so proud mm. and so emotional. He could yeah. barely hold it together because he was so proud of what his wife had done. And Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, boys to men, since they're from Philly, which is where Kobe is from, weren't they on the yes. bus with him when he went to announce uh, whether he was going to the NBA or what? There's some connection when, when Kobe started his career. Well, they had been, they had been around Kobe since the very beginning and knew of him because remember they were superstars when Kobe right. came out. Mm -hmm. They were one of the biggest acts in all of R and B and music. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not sure about the bus story, but they hung out with him a lot. Yeah. He would come to the studio and check them mm -hmm. out. And um, you know, so many people that knew Kobe so well yeah. were there. And they talked about him and they loved him. But Los Angeles is yeah. is stunned and in shock today. Well, Kevin, we thank you this morning thank for joining you. us, giving us a look at the behind the yeah. scenes, and much love to you. Great to see you. Always good to talk to you, ladies. All right, we have a quick look, uh, kind of a recap and an update on, um, you know, all these tributes are coming out. Right, and everyone here has some sort of Kobe connection, including our very own Darren Haynes. He gave some uh, commentary on what Kobe's career and life meant to him. Kobe Bryant's legacy has inspired millions both on and off the court. 20 NBA seasons, 18 All-Star appearances, five NBA titles, two Olympic gold medals, and will likely headline the Hall of Fame class of 2020 that will be enshrined this August. Kobe Bryant was a worldwide phenom. Only Michael Jordan sold more NBA jerseys than Kobe. He was also an ultimate competitor. Since the NBA began tracking last second shots, nobody has taken more and made more last second shots than Kobe Bryant. That Mamba mentality became a mantra for kids and adults. No matter if someone was shooting a basketball or a balled up piece of paper, they yelled Kobe during their follow through. I had the privilege to anchor the pregame show for Kobe's final NBA game, the one where he dropped 60 points in a Lakers win. The last few minutes of that game might be my favorite individual effort I've ever witnessed. After the game, Kobe addressed the arena, dropped the mic and said, Mamba out. Not too long after, President Barack Obama copied his move. 
But Mamba wasn't out. Kobe became a brand builder, investor, coach, and we can't forget a writer, becoming the first pro athlete and first black person to ever win an Oscar for best animated short film. Kobe once said, you're responsible for how people remember you or don't, so don't take it lightly. Kobe did it. He was that man, he was that icon, that idol, the one that proved that if you make a mistake or fail, you can always bounce back. And an example of what it means to be a father. I admired every moment he spent with his four girls, especially Gigi, who was also killed in the crash. I have a daughter of my own, and I can't imagine the hurt Kobe's wife and three girls are feeling. Cherish every moment with your loved ones. If you love them, tell them. Treat them like tomorrow isn't promised, because tomorrow isn't promised. I'm Darren Haynes. Get up, DC.